This one's a little harder for me to watch. And I don't know... Uh, first of all, it stars my wonderful friend Jessica Parker Kennedy. I love her to death. So I don't want it to sound like I have a hard time watching this because of her. That's not true. I love watching her, and I love watching her in this short. I have a hard time watching it because my intention with this was to make a self-tape feature during the pandemic. And I said this on a live stream recently, but I also said I'd get more in detail when I made the commentary. So that's now. Um, the self-tape short definitely gets dark. But the self-tape feature goes full bonk nanners, as we call it. And it, it, it's hard because I think it's, again, a maturation, maturation, a maturing of my tone and my voice. I start to investigate sexual themes. I start to investigate themes of fandom and ownership over talent that fans feel a parasocial relationship with. Um, and it goes to the, like, root of a lot of that stuff. And it really becomes, like, a full-on psychosexual horror. And it's violent, and it's fucked up, and the language in it is, like, fucking Rob Zombie times ten. And full transparency, I could not find an actress that wanted to enter into that experiment. And that's okay. You know, I... It's a lot to ask somebody to shoot something that has that kind of range of, of exploration and even depravity. Um, and then say, we're just going to shoot it. Just us two on a cell phone. Promise, it'll be great. You know, come on. Uh, it's... It was a lot to ask. And so I guess I feel a little foolish when I watch this short that that I didn't write a feature that would have gotten uh, more excitement around it. That it was something so dark and so fucked up. But it was one of the first times I felt that maybe the writing of the thing was the purpose of the thing. I write to shoot almost always. I write to shoot. And even the Onyx movie, I kept certain things very small because I knew we wouldn't have all the time in the world. And all of the budget in the world but maybe self-tape was written to explore those themes within myself and and understand them better for myself and not for an audience when i sent out the script to talent i i i i, I had a lot of explaining i had to do so i recorded personal messages to each person and it was like here's what i'm trying to say let me know if that comes across or if this thing is a jumbled mess. And most of the feedback was, I get what you're trying to say, but I'm still not on board with what the film is as a whole, even though I respect your point of view. So it remained being a short. I like the kind of technical uh, restriction of you know, you don't hear him at first, but then once she brings him in, you hear him a little on her mic, but you don't really fully hear him until she mics him, and and then you're you're living in that, and you're living in what the cell phone catches and what their lav mics catch, which leads to a really fun thing of, you know, his lav mic picking up his dialogue while, while he's talking to himself, going to the car, etc., This feels like a Hannah Kay idea, right? Kind of like cachet. Um, yeah, Benny's video, cachet. Maybe, um, oh my God. I'm forgetting the name of, uh, oh, come on. I'm forgetting one of my favorite Hannah Kay movies. No, well, it's a little piano teacher vibes, but that's not the movie I'm thinking of. I'll look it up when this is done, but holy hell. What's the Haneke movie where, like, the entire family commits suicide? 
I'll look it up. Second. Um, great. Can you just say, say something, anything? I think this was the point during the pandemic when I was, I mean, I, I still hike every day, but I'm not that svelte. Burgundy Tercel. Again, I love this stuff. Getting a Deliver and Dine shirt and hat made. Love it. No, not unless you watch basic cable dramas about angsty teen superheroes. Oh. <laughs> anger. Yeah, I'm on a show called Legacy High. Well, I was on a show called Legacy High, and then it got canceled. So. I talked to a director recently who has kind of graduated to the next level and just recently did a, a, a larger Netflix film. And he said, you know, the job of directing changes. All these all these things you're learning that you have to know because you're doing it yourself. It now becomes something that's delegated. And you become more of a project manager. And I'm not bummed out by that. Like, I love getting all of these t-shirts and hats and props made. But, like, if I could just focus on talent and camera and tone you know i'd love it i'd love to not also be the guy with the box of props that he's walking up the steps at this airbnb that we rented oh we got it through peer space but i think this works the experiment here is you know can you build enough of an Elevating suspense or story with one frame, which class does anybody does that make you think of anything? Worm, right, right. Um, you've arguably got one frame to work with, the frame changes, but that's part of the escalation. Is your POV will always be the cell phone on this tripod that she has placed here who takes the tripod, who owns the POV, changes, because those are some of the only elements that can change within this restriction. It's like you start off by just... I mean, it's the same with um, a lot of the more experimental shorts that we've gone through. What within the confines can be rearranged? What within the confines can be heightened? And that's how you find your structure to still give it like the basics that a story demands. I thought you did a great English accent in episode 501. Oh, that's a fun turn. He said he didn't know her show, but now he remembers a very specific episode and moment from her show. I like this. I like this little turn. And he spoke through you. So you had his So you're betting that the audience will at least get to this point because here's one of our first little spikes. It's also funny to me how much of my voice is in the blending of what could feel real and what might feel staged. And it's funny that that's even in the creation of Onyx. I don't often think of my Onyx work bleeding into my filmmaker work. But clearly there's still similar interests being looked into. The idea that you could make the news reports feel... Real. And this is fun, getting to hear him off screen as she's trying to talk herself down. I mean, I think like a lot of people, I was really restless during the pandemic and I was like, I need to keep shooting. I need to keep exercising. And I'm so glad Jessica was down to do this because it stretched me a lot. And it was fulfilling because I think as a piece, it works, even though it didn't lead to the feature. And then here we go. We're back in the same, <laughs> can you ground the absurd? Can you? Can you ground the absurd? Remember he joined the luminaries when I fucking... I, like, literally forgot this happened. As I started recording this commentary. I fucking forgot. I had this costume... 
You know, I'm realizing now, I wrote this to be shot before the pandemic. Because I had this commissioned and built before the pandemic, and it sat in my office for months. Yeah, I was going to try to shoot it in February. It was commissioned in January or February. There's even a live stream on Bowser Vids where I'm trying this on, and Ray, the designer, is at my house while I'm doing a live stream because we hit 250 subscribers or something. You said you wanted to do another take of your audition? And... And then in June, we finally thought, okay, two actors in a house, as long as we get tested, we could pull this off. And then we did it. It's a funny cut. Ugh, all of a sudden he's in charge. Obviously, it's a comment on the White Knight, the man that feels like he is here to save a woman when he actually has uh, malicious intent yeah, toward that woman that. or wants something in return. So there's a cut when I lift the tripod, I believe. Or the cut happens when I lift the tripod or when I swing toward the kitchen. But I matched a cut in there somewhere so that we could take all of that as act one yeah, I don't know. There is a cut in there, but it, it I compliments to me, I guess. It's pretty seamless. This was the hardest scene to film because, you know, you want it to feel like he's not intentionally filming her, but he is intent. I mean, he is filming her because the whole thing is about him seeing her through a lens and him seeing her on television and romanticizing and even fetishizing that. But it's fun to make it feel a little incidental. I feel like this has a good engine behind it. Like, even as I'm re-watching it, even more than a lot of the other shorts, I'm like, I'm engaged as an audience member in an unexpected way. I like this. I like the camera drifting off and just filming the countertop. And then, of course, he gets tweaked. He's not happy with We start to reveal, like, you know, he's a bad guy. Grover, if you don't leave, I'm gonna call the police. You can't call the police, Hannah. I'm holding your phone. God, do you know how insulting that is? After all that I've done for you? I really, I, I thank you so much for your help with the audition. I'm not just talking about the audition. I'm talking about... You know, it, it, this is... Over the years. I've done so right, a guy losing his shit while he's dressed like a cardboard superhero knight. I just love it. That's what I live for. That's what I live for. Give me more of that. I think it's also important as an artist to see, even if your work has not received widespread exposure, You've got to constantly be creating so that everything feels like it was building so that you don't feel like these projects have no worth. And for me, if the Onyx project is what finally gets wider exposure or just gets me an agent, all of these will have led to that. My confidence behind that project is directly tethered to each of these shorts that we've watched over the course of these three videos. And that's why as an artist, it's important to continue to create no matter what it looks like the outcome will be. Don't let your muscles atrophy and taking action and creating is what gets you out of your head. And it's what breaks that stasis or that threat of stasis. Cause you can sit around all day and be like, so what if I make that short? No one's gonna fucking see it. Got it. Oh yeah, so what if I make that proof of concept? No one's gonna want to make the feature. And you know what? It doesn't matter if anybody sees that short or funds that feature 
What matters is you've done it. So you're not atrophied. You're not giving up. You're still mobilizing those talents. And that's the most important thing because you never know when anything's going to work or pay off. So you, you, you can't create because of that possibility. You have to create because you like creating and just pray the opportunity comes. Stupid fucking knife. It also makes me laugh that she reminds him that they're supposed to kiss in this scene and he's like, what the fuck? Oh yeah, oh, and then he's nervous. But obviously, spoiler alert, she's also reminding him they're supposed to kiss so she can get his helmet off. Man, my hair was so short. He's thrown by that kiss. Reminds me of in Rushmore when she's like, what would you tell them? What would you tell your friends? You know, it's like he can't even... She calls his bluff in a way and he can't function. We only had three bottles. And I think the first... The first one, it was almost like it came through the frame too fast and it broke so hard it cut up my head the second one we slowed down and we realized she needed to kind of show it to camera for a beat before it came crashing down but then still was a little too quick i think but the third one was perfect to see wine bottle oh so even within these confines you can foreshadow because she's been drinking the whole time audio has told us that she's gone off screen to sip wine in order to get confidence to do her audition it's fun to investigate within confines. I'm sure it would also be fun to investigate without confines. But for now, we investigate within confines. This is a reshoot. Figuring out this ending, it, it always ended with him tied up and her in control. And it being revealed that... Him saying he went by the name Blackheart's King was actually him accidentally giving away his identity as one of her harassers, her online harassers. But we did not have her stab him. We came back and shot her stabbing the shit out of him. Originally, it just ended with her taking out the knife and saying, do you believe in um, synchronicity? But then we realized, oh yeah, it needs to be her back in front of the camera trying to finish her audition. And I, and I don't know why I didn't come to that idea earlier. It took shooting it and looking at it and then realizing it needed a different ending that went just a little further. You know, I think that's a great short. <laughs> this, whole, this whole series of me doing commentaries is just me going, I think that's a great short. I don't know why I don't have an agent, why I'm not more successful. I like that short too. Oh, another one. I like this short I made too. Huh. Hopefully I'm not delusional. Hopefully all of you like these shorts too. All right, Thrill Me, also known as Terror on Tape. Love this idea, too. Here's another example of why you can't make stuff with too much expectation placed on it because we made this short about a haunted VHS tape and not three weeks later it was announced that Seth Rogen was producing a horror comedy about a haunted VHS tape. hey oh. All right, well... Put this idea in the fucking trash. You know, that's just how it goes. It's how it goes. It was something else we could shoot during the pandemic. It's also always annoying when you have an idea, but something comes out between when you had your idea and when you got your idea out and everybody thinks it it is derivative of that idea. Like I had this idea for a long time. And then that movie Host came out on Shudder, did Gangbusters. 
And then when this finally came out, they were like, oh, I'm getting host vibes. That's fine. I did not, I had not seen host when we shot this, you know? You gotta love a puck cameo. Thank you. Shout out to everybody on my channel that showed up and did this chat so we could capture it live. Man, am I even going to have enough time left on this card to get through? Hopefully I do. Sound design so clutch on this. Mike Gallagher yet again. Fright Night on the TV. Hey, guess what's on my TV right now? Fright Night. You know, I've, I've told people that the Onyx movie is like Fright Night. And I had somebody read the script recently that was like, it is not like Fright Night. Uh, you fucked up and you wrote something that's actually not like the things you claim inspired it. That got me in my head a little bit. And then as I watch Fright Night daily, I feel like the Onyx movie is like Fright Night. I don't know what to say. And this was fun to get out and shoot. Again, it was pandemic style. We all got tested, masked up, six feet apart, but still, you know, it was a little like, I, it, was, it was probably June or July. Oh my gosh, it's been a year. Oh my gosh, I shot self-tape and thrill me a year ago. Wow. I'm all nervous because I don't think I have enough room left on my card to get through watching this. But I desperately want it to. eBay pages, forums galore. I finally have in my possession. Love getting this stuff designed. The Cyber Ghoul poster, the Cyber Ghoul VHS. I love it. It just arrived on my doorstep this morning. Wait, so you don't even know what's in there? No, I have no idea what's in here. It could be uh it could be fucking a copy of like Leprechaun Six. It could be. This could be a five hundred dollar Leprechaun Six. That would be money well spent. <laughs> wow. What? It's Cyber Ghoul. <laughs> it is Cyber Ghoul. This is the original box art. This is the original painted illustration. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Holy hell. I'm pretty sure Che, my illustrator buddy, did that box art. I think we'll get through it on this card. Maybe not. This could easily be a 60 to 70 page virtually shot film. I mean, I, I tell you, one of the things that sucks is like, and I know that having an agent doesn't solve every problem, but you make something like this. And if I had an agent, maybe I could have sold this idea during the pandemic. I mean, I guess not because Seth Rogen already did it. But as an indie unrepped filmmaker, you just kind of sit here and make things. And as I said a few minutes ago, that's what it's all about. You just got to be happy making things. <laughs> Even though I'm just sitting here going, yeah, but if I had an agent, I'd be making things and then getting meetings and pitching making the feature version of those things. But ultimately, what I said holds true. You've got to be happy just creating. You'll drive yourself mad, as mad as I've been driven, if you fixate on the outcome. And it'll also stall you out from creating further. And you never know when the project that's going to help lead to a professional breakthrough is right around the corner. Jesus Christ, I hope that's the one. Oh, go back in business. We got a minute and a half on the card. How much time is left in the movie? Let's see. It, the, the card's going to get full right before the end of this movie. Ooh, tension! 
Love that. That's fun. It's a fun thing. I'm sorry I'm sweaty and I'm covered in sunscreen from my hike today. But uh, I'm, you know, it's, it's warm in the garage. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened, but something spooked the little man big time. Oh, great. And we lost Morgan. Okay, and we lost Cyberghoul. Awesome. Um, well, we have waited for far too long to give up on this. Season. All right, Let's I've got to pause it rest. with a minute left. Because my card's about to run out. Two seconds. All right, sorry about that. Uh, in the time between when I paused Thrill Me and now I uh, went and took a shower and got ready for bed. So now I'm in my jammies. Okay, let's finish up Thrill Me. I'm gonna take all of you with me. Let's do it. All right, and maybe by the time I'm back, Morgan will have reconnected and I won't be doing this stream. I also love coming up with fake names for horror movies. Chat is going Gator Chainsaw, is that one of the ones that I, I say in this? Gator hacksaw. The fuck is chat talking about? All right, how about this chat? Uh, what's your favorite Bill Hopkins movie? Bill Hopkins is supposed to be a that one or a surrogate for I love Gator Tom Hopkins. Atkins. I don't really fuck I think this whole reveal works well though. What the fuck? He drops the camera down. We see Cyber Ghoul. I like the little foreshadowing of the cartoon at the beginning of the film being his bouncing head. Uh, and then there is his severed head. People really like the way that looks, too. I think that does look good. Well, yeah, I really enjoy Thrill Me. It's a shame Seth Rogen's already making a haunted VHS movie. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know what there is to say about that. <laughs> That's just the way the cookie crumbles. All right, so hopefully this was insightful. I don't know. I mean, I was kind of all over the place. But uh, I hope you got a little bit of a glimpse into what goes into my mind when I'm working on these shorts. Now let's look up what the name of the Michael Haneke film was that I'm trying to remember. Um, here we go. I was thinking of the movie, um, okay, not that, was it The Seventh Continent, hold on, yeah, The Seventh Continent, yeah, The Seventh Continent, yeah, ooh, dark stuff, a lot of that earlier Haneke stuff I really love the kind of experimental video feeling stuff Benny's video the seventh continent gosh even that voyeuristic aspect of cachet you know I, I I feel like if I hadn't raised the money for the onyx movie that would have been next on my dock it would be making something like that some kind of experimental video nasty um okay well I hope you enjoyed that uh, I'll be back with more content. There's live streams every Friday at 6 PST. More updates on the Onyx movie uh, all the time. And um, yeah, thanks.